So let's add a first controller. So in the controllers folder, I'll add a controller and I'll call this one employee manager controller. We have the default index action and I'm actually going to remove that. Now, because this controller needs to perform CRUD operations on the employees table, we'll need the instance of app DB context that we created earlier. Now we could instantiate the app DB context just like any other C sharp object, but there is a better way. We can simply inject the object of app DB context into the constructor of the employee manager controller. So we are going to be using the dependency injection feature of ASP.NET Core. So I'm going to create a private variable for app DB context. I'll call it DB and I'll initialize it to null. Now let's create a constructor. And here I will inject the app DB context into the constructor. So this is going to be app DB context. I'll call it DB as well. And in the constructor, we'll assign the value from our argument passed into the constructor to a private variable. So we will have an access to all the functionality of app DB context. So I could just write DB equals DB, meaning a private variable DB equals the app DB context argument, but you can see it's underlined. That's because they are the same name. So I will specify that this keyword, meaning this DB belongs to the private variable and this DB belongs to the app DB context argument. Another way to avoid all this confusion with the names would be just to name the argument something else, let's say DB2 or whatever you want. But I wanted to show you that if you have the same name, you simply add the this keyword and it will refer to the variable of DB inside the class. Now let's create our first action. So this is going to be a public action. So this will I action result and I'll call this one list. So here we will simply generate the list of all employees. And we're going to do that using a link query. So I will specify a list of employee. I call it model because this is what's going to be passed inside the view. And here I will do the link query to query the employees table and return everything as a list. So the query is from, let's do E for employees in the DB context. So DB dot employees DB context. And we can sort the final list by the employee ID. So it's going to be ordered by E dot employee ID. And at the end, we will select all the employees. So we'll do select the employees that are already ordered by the ID. And after that, we will convert everything to list and that's going to be assigned to our model list. So fairly simple query. Again, we are basically querying the employees table, order everything by the ID, and then we will select everything from this table and convert it to a list. So this will have all the properties and all the fields inside the employees table, like the first name, last name, the hire date and all the others. So at the end, we will simply return the model into the view. So we will return a view with the model in it. And now let's create a view for this. But before we do that, we need to actually make some changes into our startup.cs. Let's just open that. And down here, you can see we have the routing that goes to the home controller by default and then index action by default if not specified. So in our controller, we don't have a home controller and we don't have the index action. We have an employee manager controller and the list action and that's gonna be our default action. So in the startup.cs, we will specify that by default, if not specify the controller, then it's going to be the employee manager. And the action by default is going to be the list action. So when the application loads, 
and no controller and action is specified, we'll go to the employee manager and perform the list action. And there's one more change I want to make here. We remove this view for the error before that came with the template. So I will remove this else statement. All right, so that's the change we needed to make for our routing in order to access the employee manager controller and list action by default. So now let's create the view for the list action.